Okay, so good afternoon. Can we uh, start now the lecture? Hello? Yes, Buddha. Yes, no. but, uh, yes Buddha. Okay, so um, this is supposed to be part of the lecture yesterday, but nagkulang kita in oras. So I will try my best to finish, uh, finish uh, uh, the two topics. Uh, uh, for this afternoon para your excitement for the first short quiz di rima ko at masayang. Okay? So, uh, yesterday we talked about the um, the introductory part of uh, about uh, pharmacology and uh, I have emphasized it uh, yesterday that there are two main areas uh, for uh, for you to appreciate uh, pharmacology, and that is your uh, no, uh, pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. So, sering ko pa, if you can master um, these two areas, it would be easy for you. Uh, you will love pharmacology. Okay, as a review, so we uh, discussed yesterday about pharmacodynamics uh, and pharmacokinetics. So for purposes of discussion, so the pharmacodynamic, again, refers to what the drug does to the body. So this is a function of how the drug interacts with the receptors. So we'll, uh, this afternoon, we'll be talking about uh, the, the uh, general characteristics of receptors. And then we will also be discussing some uh, measures that are related to uh, pharmacodynamics. Okay. So again, uh, we will be dealing here with the biomech uh, chemical, physiological, and molecular effects of the drug through its action through the the uh, no, uh, through the participation of receptors. So the drug cannot act in our body unless there is an appropriate receptor. So here. So just like uh, uh, no, um, as an introduction, um, we have this receptor and please take note, it has these uh, different uh, parts and the most important, uh, important old, uh, part is the one that interacts with the drug and that is the uh, binding site. The active side. Okay, so before we deal on, on, on uh, uh, we have to define first what what is a receptor or a drug receptor. So it is uh, defined as a receptor as a selective ligand binding macromolecules that mediate the effects of endogenous substances. So, among them, considering um, you encountered this during your lecture in physiology and then in biochemistry. So, we are not dealing here with only about drug action, but like, for example, the native uh, or the natural substrate of, of these uh, receptors, like hormones or other substances uh, in, that are uh, that need to interact with a protein para ma-express it here, action. Specifically, uh, no, uh, ma-appreciate ni mo ni nga concept about receptors when you discuss about uh, endocrine uh, system. Okay? So, here, um, one characteristic of the uh, receptor is its 
being selective. Okay? So, the sec uh, selectivity of the receptor is being uh, determined by its ano, complementary uh, binding site to that of the uh, substance or chemical. So, when there is this uh, best fit between the interacting endogenous substance to that of the receptor uh, binding site, then you expect that there will be um, a maximized response that you can observe. So, itong, itong, uh, requirement here is to have the maximal effect of the of the substance or chemical is the selectivity in its interaction with that of the binding site in the receptor. Okay, so what are the characteristics of receptors? First is, it is saturable. So you, um, you are already aware that for the uh, for the drug uh, or any substance interact with the with the uh, receptor you expect that as you increase the concentration of the interacting substance or for this matter in pharmacology with the drug you expect a maximal uh, response so as you increase the dose of the drug, many of this drug interacts with the receptor and then you expect um, increasing effect of the drug or increasing uh, expression of the effects. But please take note that once the available um, binding sites are no longer available, or it is already saturated, even you increase the dose of the drug when fully occupied na itong binding sites in the receptor, then you cannot expect an increase in the, in the uh, response. Okay? So that is the concept of uh, saturability. Then another characteristic of the uh, receptor, just like what I have mentioned earlier, is it's being selective in its interaction with the with the uh, the, the the substance or again for this matter uh, with the drug. So there is a predetermined uh, binding site in which the drug will interact because later um, you will learn it uh, in um, uh, for the parts of the receptor there are many sites uh, identified in the receptor and there is only one site in which the the drug can interact so here the concept of selectivity kun if this particular uh, drug has the best fit with the binding site identified in the receptor, then it will only it will only uh, interact with that particular drug. Okay, so that is being selective. So. Um, to uh, further discuss about selectivity, here we have the uh, in this area. So this is your receptor. This is the receptor, and this is the native substrate for this receptor. This may be this may be hormone. So the binding of this natural uh, substance or hormone to that of the receptor. So the binding between the two and the formation of the receptor uh, substance complex, it will now express its uh, expected effect in the cell. Okay. So if we apply this in 
in pharmacology, uh, make sure that the, the drug that is, the, the drug that is, sorry, that is formulated is in such a way it has the same structural characteristic with the native or the uh, native substrate for that receptor. Like for example, din ni iningan uh, first nga ano to, figure. Uh, so, x square ito niya. Tapos, didi han drug. Um, inin ano to niya. Pentagon it niya shape. But then, if you can observe, may the niya part that has the best fit with the receptor. So, this one. So, with the interaction of the agonist, when you say agonist in uh, pharma, this is the native uh, substance that specifically interact with the receptor. So here, there, there is a uh, no complementary ito by the side to the shape of the uh, part of the agonist drug, uh, drug that interacts with the binding side. So there is a the perfect uh, fit. So you expect that there is now the expression of the uh, expected effect of the drug. Okay, and here um, we have the antagonist drug. When you say antagonist, it the effect of the drug is uh, no, um, it is opposite to the effect. Uh, of the natural or the agonist uh, drug. So here, so we have this green uh, molecule. So does it fit it on the uh, binding uh, part to the um, receptor? Diri. So what do you expect? Makakaupok yu palaga po ni antagonist with this receptor but there is, uh, it is not completely uh, ano, fitted for the receptor. So what do you expect? The binding now of this antagonist, of this antagonist drug, will block the expression of the uh, expected effect in the cell. Did you understand here? So that's the the uh, no, the concept of selectivity. Okay. So um, it is not in some instances uh, it is not sufficient that the the binding or the interaction that is made between the drug and the receptor and the receptor uh, will ultimately cause uh, the, uh, the expression of the in, uh, expected effect of the union between your drug and the receptor. There are also uh, situations in which um, it needs effectors or substances that will facilitate the expression of the expected effect. Did you understand? So, uh, in some uh, instances, it's not only the participation of the union of the drug and the receptor that will ultimately produce the effect. There are situations in which uh, the union of the drug to the receptor will uh, no, is facilitated the expected effect through the participation of effector substances, just like your cyclic AMP, cyclic AMP. So here, um, this is the hormone or the native substance that interacts with the receptor. Okay, so the binding here of the hormone cause the 
activation of this uh, receptor. And the union between this uh, hormone and the receptor um, will activate another system like the conversion. Like, for example, if this is an enzyme, it will cause the, the conversion of your GTP to, uh, to uh, GDP, okay. which in turn will activate now this enzyme adenylate cyclase. The adenylate cyclase is responsible for the conversion of your ATP to cyclic AMP. So ultimately, this cyclic AMP that is produced in this uh, process is re the one, uh, no, responsible now for expressing the effect of the initial hormone that caused the interaction with the receptor. So we have the cyclic AMP, then it, this will be responsible in activating this uh, P, uh, PK and then down the line, the other uh, uh, steps in the pathway. So here, the function of your cyclic AMP will act as the effector substance in the reaction. Did you understand? Okay. So another example as uh, no, another example of an effector substance is the participation of your ty uh, tyrosine kinase. Ty uh, tyrosine kinase. You have learned it in your biochemistry that a kinase in enzyme is responsible for what? What is the main function of your tyros, ano, of your kinase enzyme? Phosphorylation. Very good. So uh, the tyro, ano, the kinase enzyme is responsible for phosphorylation. So specifically, we have this tyrosine kinase uh, enzyme, which is inactive. So the binding now of the substance here to the receptor will cause now the activation of this uh, of this uh, enzyme tyrosine kinase so it will be converted into an active tyrosine kinase enzyme that is responsible in phosphorylating any proteins like example, um, enzymes. So um, an enzyme becomes active if it is phosphorylated. And it is this enzyme that is active is responsible now in translating the expected effects in the uh, in the cell. So nakaka expect ka na an and cell, uh, cellular response secondary to the initial uh, stimulus or stimuli that causes the activation of this uh, tyrosine kinase. Did you understand? So tyrosine, uh, tyrosine kinase is another example of an effector substance. My question, uh, ma arinara, ma aris, no, aringa sa mga bakura. My question, hello. My question, wala. Wala po. Thank you. Okay, another uh, important uh, uh, terms under pharmacodynamics in relation to those uh, 
to drug action is the graded dose response relationship. Diba? When you increase the dose of the drug, you expect you expect an increase also in the response. Correct? Correct, di ba? Yes, yes, it is in ano uh, you ano uh, uh, you expect an increase in the response when you increase the dose of the drug given to the patient. Tapos kung satru, uh, saturated na itong satru, uh, saturated na itong mga uh, receptors, then you uh, you will expect that the response now will slow down and it will plateau. Just like this one, concentrate on the green. Green nga, nga anto, uh, um, graph, this one. So, as you increase the dose of the drug, you increase the response up to the time that you have now plateauing in the uh, in the response this corresponds now to the to the saturation of the receptors hey as you further also increase the dose of the of the ano, of the drug you are going beyond the ano the the dose that is ano uh, uh, therapeutic so hence you go uh, you go now to the to the lethal side of the effect of the drug okay so initially ang ito ang importante ng baruan natin nga may dadla certain acceptable ter, ano uh, dose that is to be given to the patient kay Gutili ay lang a uh, change in the ko if you go beyond the dosage range of the drug instead of ano uh, ato ka efficacy nang ato ka lethal effect okay so that is the concept of graded dose response relationship okay so here you will uh, know when you uh, graph the dose response of the drug you can have something like this concentrate on this ano uh, on this graph okay so here again as you increase the dose of the drug you expect that many of the individuals will have an observable effect of the drug. Okay. So, from this concept, dida na buhi an ED50. What is ED50? The ED50, it's the dose of the drug in which 50% of the subjects have the observable effect. Did you get, uh, get it? When you say AD, effective dose, a dose of the drug in which 50% of the subjects have manifested the expected effect of the drug or the therapeutic effect. Okay? So, dili itong ED50 does not mean the dose, but it refers to the percentage of the population that manifests the therapeutic effect. Did you get it? Same is true with your LD50. Okay, di ba? When you increase the dose, makuha ni mo an effective dose. Pero, 
when you further when you further uh, increase the dose gimbubutang na nimo itong patient ha huh? lethal na dose and the undesirable na mga effect so amulo at ito karisingo nito ld or lethal dose 50 this means that 50% of the subject have already manifest the lethal effects of the drug. Huh? So, amo iton, iton karusingon ton, ED50 and uh, LD50. Okay? So, with regards to drug safety, there are, an, ano, sorry, Uh, the, uh, therapeutic in index, I will be discussing this uh, later. Okay, here. Another uh, very important uh, concept with regards to pharmacodynamics is effect C. Effect C. So, here, this simply means as you increase the dose of the drug, you increase also the number of patients manifesting the expected therapeutic effect. Okay, that's efficacy. So, what are the factors that uh, relate to us? How effective is the drug? So, these are the, the factors. We have the nature of the drug, the characteristics of the receptor that are involved in the interaction, and the associated effector systems. Meaning associated effector uh, systems and available, just like uh, I have mentioned earlier, the cyclic AMP mediated uh, response and the tyrosine kinase response. So that's effect C. Next uh, concept of related with pharmacodynamics is potency. Potency. Okay, here. Um, here, uh, no, um, when this refers to the to the the uh, uh, the dose that is needed to obtain the the expected therapeutic effect the lower the dose the lower the dose of the drug compared it to the number of response, uh, responsive subject, kung mas lower hiya ng adamo ito na respond, the more potent is the drug. Did you get it? The lesser the dose of the drug given to the group of patients, and many of these subjects or patients respond at that lower dose, the more potent is the drug. Nakuha? Did you get it? Huh? Yes, yes. So, yes. Okay. So, kung nakinang lang kahin, ano, uh, higher dose of the drug, higher dose of the drug, na in, in ano to, uh, para ma-notice, ma it on response in a higher number of, of subjects, so, mas lower ang potency ang drug. Okay? So, kinanglanin yun. These are very, uh, no, very basic na mga concepts. I hope you still remember efficacy and potency. Okay. So, we've been talking here before, uh, earlier, uh, Interaction between the receptors and the drug. Okay, there is also such 
acting as spare receptors. Spare uh, receptors. Mm -hmm. This spare receptors occur when there is already maximal effect that is achieved at this particular dose of the drug and yet may da pa available na receptors uh, nga, nga empty or I mean it's not yet occupied. Nakakuang ka mo itong, ano, itong spare receptors. You have this already response and then you have all this uh, number of receptors um, that participated the union between the the drug and the receptors. And yet, may daka pa na bibilin na extra na receptors. Ini nga mga extra receptors na naka-accomplish ka na han, han, han expected na therapeutic na effect, these are called spare receptors. Okay? Okay. Another uh, no, thing to remember in uh, no, uh, characteristic of your receptor, diri la itong available na binding site ha receptor oo sala. There are many uh, no, binding sites. One is reserved para han iya native na partner na drug and there are other also binding sites for the uh, for other substances to interact. Okay, so like for example, if this substance A enter up with with ano to, uh, with this part of the receptor, since this is the agonist. This is the native partner to this receptor. You expect, you expect a response, and that is this one. Kaji, nakaji, nagets niyo to. Okay. Then we have the competitive inhibitor. When you say competitive inhibitor, it has the same. Um, Confo, uh, no, uh, configuration of the binding site, so this substance may be uh, may also interact with this available na binding site. So, but then it iya ko niya, dirhiya a native nga or natural substrate for this receptor. So, what will happen? So, kun be alone na. Waray response kay inhibitor man niya. So, waray di niyo di na nakita. Okay. Awa here, the, the green line, mas makuanan niya did, and when the agonist is, uh, exists alone, you have this response. At lower dose, at lower dose, may data na response da yun. Kay waray man niya kakontra. There, the, there is maximal utilization of the binding site by the agonist. Kaka follow? Huh? Yes, yeah. And then, when the antagonist or the competitive inhibitor is mixed with the agonist, must slower near response. Because may dananiya ka away. Diba? So, and if you're going to plot it here, we have something like this. Mas maiyan iya response, kaya may dananiya ka away, ka agaw itong binding site. Then you get it? Parigutan may mga kuan, kabit one, kabit two. So, amo na ito. Okay. Then, you have learned it again in biochemistry, the role of allosteric substances. Allosteric substances are substances 
that do not uh, express the effect of the substance, but only either enhance or inhibit the action of the substance. So we have something as allosteric activator or allosteric inhibitor. So when the agonist here interact with the binding site and then this all allosteric activator also bind to this area, then you can have an enhanced activation and then you expect a stronger response or effect. And you have something like this, this red line. Nakakita? Because it has the nabuligan he agonist by the allosteric activator. What happens if in the presence of, of ano to, um, agonist and allosteric inhibitor? So you have something like this. Naghina ang iya response kay may daman ni what nakiapil nga substance that slows down or inhibit the response. Okay? So we have here the native binding site and then the other sites that participates the reinteraction. Okay, so those are the inert uh, binding sites. Okay. So we'll just go this. Okay. okay. So this is just uh, will show to us the how uh, how the drug uh, interacts with the receptor and the expected effect. Again, when you say agonist, this is the native partner of this receptor. So you can have the ano, maximal effect of the drug or the substance. And then a partial agonist, that means there is a natural na partner or substrate for this receptor, pero it has a uh, part of its uh, figure is the it made a part that is capable of interacting with the available uh, binding site. So, aditiya action. Pwede hiya mag-interact, pero pwede rin man hiya ang original na partner, partial la iton iya effect. Hence, he is called, uh, this the one is called a partial agonist. May dalgi hapon response, pero not that the same with the ano, full agonist of the drug. And then, of course, when the binding site is occupied by the antagonist, you don't expect a therapeutic effect to happen. Okay, so in here will just show to us an activity and agonist, partial agonist, and antagonist. In terms of when you plot the activity against the concentration of the substance. Okay. Here, antagonist. So, there are types of antagonism. So, we have the physical, chemical, physiological, and pharmacological antagonism. So, these are the four types of antagonism. First, uh, no, uh, physical, chemical, and uh, physiological, and pharmacological antagonism. So, uh, first is we have physical antagonism. So this is based on the physical property of the drug. Right? of the pesticide so na prepared that uh, 
you prevent uh, the uh, manifestations of uh, related to pesticide poisoning. So with the use of activated charcoal. Next, we have chemical antagonism. So this is a type of antagonism where a drug counteract on another by simple chemical reaction or neutralization not necessarily related by the binding of the substance to the receptor. Okay, like for example, the giving of calcium sodium editate in cases of lead poisoning. So that's chemical antagonism. Then we have functional antagonism or physiological. Clean is released in the presence of high blood sugar because its action is to decrease the uh, blood sugar. Whereas in, in times of ano, uh, hypoglycemia, glucagon is released by the alpha cells to facilitate the formation of sugars para makorek itong hypoglycemia. So, um, and the effect is ano to, uh, opposite with each other. And also hypoglycemic agent like your insulin. The other one is a hyperglycemic agent, your glucagon. So this is another example okay, uh, of physiologic antagonism. Um, I will discuss this more when I discuss the Ano to? Um, ito ang autonomics. Then we have pharmacological uh, antagonism. So we have the competitive and non-competitive. So in competitive, uh, we have the reversible uh, and then irreversible. So when it is referred as competitive, they interact with the same, the same receptor. So this particular agent, an agonist, um, interact with the native nga koan, nga binding site. And then here comes another substance that complete, uh, no, competes with the available binding site with the agonist. So that's, uh, no. They compete with it, uh, the same binding site. So it is termed as reversible and irreversible. Con reversible, when you increase the dose of the agonist, the native partner of that, ano, uh, of that uh, receptor, when you increase the dose, you this ano, um, um, the this competitively ano, uh, competitive substance will be displaced from the binding site. So you expect now the 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 effect to be expressed. And irreversible, it is where na bisan pa ni mo increase iton ano iton dose iton agonist. It is not uh, the the uh, no, the expected effect cannot be expressed because in in uh, irreversible it on the rinimuhiyama the displaced from the uh, binding site. Then when you say non-competitive inhibition, they usually interact with a different receptors. So the re the re la uusang receptor tag iya ira. Ano to, tag usa usa heran receptor ito non competitive okay so this is your ano uh, this will show to us the pharmacologic antagonism in number one we have the uh, reversible 
how it here so we have the natural natural na na substrate for this for this ano to uh, receptor so the binding will cause now the expression of the effect and then we have the uh, competitive antagonism so duduhahira so we have the native uh, partner or substrate and then this is the competitive uh, antagonist so it binds to the binding site so it will now cause ano uh, blocking in the expression of the effects in non competitive this is the what uh, the one i told you that the can ano uh, bind with the 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 ano uh, separate nga uh, binding binding uh, site so here this is the native it binds to the usual uh, binding site tapos the the this antagonist uh, binds with another binding site so the binding of this non competitive antagonist will prevent the uh, the expression of the uh, uh, effect okay so just uh, no uh, for the uh, the definition uh, purposes so competitive antagonist the drugs that bind to or very close to the receptor site in a reversible way uh, without activating the vector system for the receptor. So you can overcome the inhibition by adding more agonist. Then when you refer to an irreversible antagonist, it does not overcome by adding more uh, agonist so this will cause now the downward shift of the uh, maximum effect with no shift the curve on the dose uh, and uh, unless spare receptors are present okay so that's the reversible attacks another um another term or concept about pharmacodynamics is the so-called therapeutic index. Therapeutic index. So here, uh, the therapeutic index means um, it refers to the uh, the higher the therapeutic index the safer is the drug. So the, the lower is the dose that you can have already the therapeutic effect, the observable therapeutic effect, this uh, no, ex expresses the therapeutic index. Okay? That was... Uh, Parang range ito niya between the therapeutic effect and the therapeutic lethal or toxic effect. So observing per, uh, fifty percent of the of the uh, response from the subjects. So index, and then we have the therapeutic window. Ito therapeutic window refers to the dosage range it refers uh, to the do, uh, dosage range so if you're going to plot between the concentration of the drug against the patients responding this usually corresponds to the per, uh, 50 percent of the uh, therapeutic dose achieved against the uh, time that uh, that uh, you also start to have the toxicity of the drug. I think the next slide will show to us the powerline. Uh, um, but I don't therapeutic window. This corresponds to the dose range in which it is 
uh, it a, it uh, the dose that is safe to to be given to the patient before you manifest the toxicity of the drug. So san o magkamayada maka-observe ka han and and to toxicity and drug. Okay? So we've been discussing about ano to uh, receptor drug relationship. The next problem now is how to uh, channel the signal that is imported by the drug uh, upon combining with the receptor. So the signaling uh, mechanism. So we have five major signaling mechanism. So we have the first one. Uh, this is very simple because it only requires simple diffusion of the drug across the membrane. So here we have the this drug which is lipid soil, uh, soluble. This is lipid soluble. So being lipid, it can freely diffuse itself in the bilipid layer in your membranes. So, pwede nila tiya derodiretso magsakob or pwede nila duwat tiya dumiretso paggawas. So, simple na tiya nga signaling, uh, signaling mechanism. So, if for example, this substance is lipid soluble and the available receptor is in the uh, intracellular compartment or in the involved organelle in the cell, so derecho na tiya malusot. Uh, dealing with hydrophilic uh, substances, may daman ni what mga water channels in which the drug can can pass freely into the cell. Okay, that's the first one. Next, the second signaling mechanism is this time. The binding of the drug, um, this, uh, no, this receptor, this receptor is not only an ordinary receptor. This is a receptor with characteristic enzyme activity. Did you get it? So this one, this receptor has with inaia characteristic have enzymatic activity so do not ia function as a receptor and at the same time being an enzyme okay so that the binding of this substance or drug to this receptor will cause the activation of the catalytic activity of the this enzyme receptor uh, structure. Okay? So, amaton iya. So, it is with the activation of the catalytic domain of the enzyme that is responsible now in expressing the effect of the drug. So, and second mechanism is receptor having enzyme coupled uh, activity. Then, ano ito? An example of this is the, the one uh, I have mentioned earlier, the function of the tyrosine kinase uh, receptor. Okay? So, that's an example. The tyrosine kinase um, is an example of the receptor uh, activation resulting to the activation of the enzyme catalytic activity of the of the receptor. Okay. Next um, signaling mechanism is through participation now of the um, ion channel. 
the ion channel. So that, uh, so if this is the substance, this is the ordinary uh, receptor. The binding of the the binding of the substance to this receptor will cause the conformational change in of the receptor, opening now the the receptor channel, causing the end flux of ions. Like for example, ano, uh, activation of this ano, uh, of the binding of this substance to this ion will cause the the entry of sodium ions inside the cell that will now change the polar and the it will cause now depolarization of the main brains. And then the other uh, activities will be switched on. So an example for that mechanism is the one that happens during the release of release of insulin, like for example, glycoside. Glycoside is an uh, glycoside is an uh, an an uh, no. It is a hypoglycemic agent. Sorry. Glycoside is a sulfonylurea which is a hypoglycemic drug. So available uh, brands in the market is, I don't know if you're familiar, diamicron. Anong action ni diamicron? Okay. It acts with the sulfonyl urea receptor. So the binding of glycoside to the sulfonyl urea receptor will cause the opening of the calcium channel favoring the influx of calcium inside the cell. An increase in the concentration of calcium inside the cell will cause now the exocytosis of insulin from the beta cells causing now the release of insulin into the bloodstream. So that's the the how your glycoside or other sulfonylurea acts through facilitation in the release or in the uh, entry of calcium and then an increase in the intracytoplasmic concentration of your calcium will cause now the release of your insulin from the beta cells. The next mechanism is through the participation of uh, effector substances, just like the adenyl cyclase, the one I mentioned earlier. So, first is the binding of the binding of this uh, this drug or hormone into this channel, and will cause the activation of the GTP. The GTP is the activation of your GTP is responsible in the activation of your adenyl cyclase enzyme. So once the adenyl cyclase is activated, it is responsible of cleaving your ATP, converting it into di, um, DMT and your cyclic AMT. Adenosine monophosphate. Uh, so this cyclic AMT will act now as the second messenger and is responsible now in cascading the expected effects in the pathway. Okay, so that's another signal, uh, signaling mechanism. Okay, this is another example. I'll be discussing this more in ano to, in autonomics okay so after discussing uh, signal trans ano trans uh, the mechanism of si uh, signal transduction there is a need to control 
to control the the ano to, uh, control the activity of your receptors. So it is through down regulation. So because uh, no, frequent or continuous exposure to agonists result in the reduction of the receptor response. So what are the different mechanisms to control the receptor activity? First is intracellular proteins may block access of the G uh, proteins to, act to the activated receptor molecule. So if this is the active receptor, so by binding or having ano to, another protein to block the, this receptor, it will cause desensitization. So there na hiya makakakaskade and iya signal na in, uh, dapat transmit. Another mechanism is the agonist bound receptor may be internalized by endocytosis, removing now them from further exposure to extra uh, cellular molecules. So just like this one, it is through internalization of this that it, uh, it will cause now prevention of further binding with these this, ano uh, substances into the available ano to, uh, receptors. So that's another mechanism to control the, the action of your uh, receptor. Okay, so para pa ito niya. Ang oh, last na. Oh. Pero kung ang balaad doon, ang kanan kakulog pala doon abahaw, may da pa malang, malaksi pa at doon. Do you have any questions? Ang kakulog pala doon, mas masayunay ito sunod. Pharmacokinetics. Do you have any questions? Questions? Nan, very good. Naintindihan la bisan ang mga nan nan koan medical and ananto and preparatory na course and HR hinunan HRM pa low inupan iyo classmate nga HRM may da pangani koan uh, computer Naintindihan la kung di rin nga ni Martin, pagbasa kang katsun. katsun. Okay? So, I'll proceed with uh, para makag-quiz good kita Monday. Monday at tong quiz? Ano? Okay. Next. Oh, excited yung quiz. Next is pharmacokinetics. So, ano tong ano Pharmacokinetics. This, eh, ano, uh, this refers to what the body does to the drug. So, from the time that the drug is being un administered up to the time that it is being excreted. So, this uh, refers more on the uh, response of the body to the drug. So, when you give the the drug to the patient, it, the first thing is, of course, administration. Ano? The next that will happen is it is being distributed in your body, whether it is given orally, through injection, through suppositories, or whatever ano, uh, road of administration. So during distribution, when you check for the for the drug, na, it could be in your blood circulation, at uh, the intravascular space, or nakasulod na intravascular uh, ano, tissues, then it now it is now uh, located in the extracellular fluid compartment, and then from the extracellular 
it diffuses into the cell and stays in the intracellular fluid compartment and then ultimately being deposited in the tissues. So, amay to ton, ano, uh, the fate of the drug that is given to the patient. Okay, what are the different factors affecting the distribution of, of uh, drugs? So, there are two main categories. One is related to the drug itself and the other one related to the body. So, what are the factors related to the drug itself? It is lipid solubility. So, if your drug is uh, lipid soluble, walang kahirap hirap, it can enter your cell. Diba? Especially, itong, like, itong, uh, lipid, uh, rich in lipid uh, concentration, nga, like your brain. So, madali lang ito, dito, uh, my brain area. Okay, molecular size, I have mentioned it already. That there is a range from less than 100 or molecular weight or more than 1,000. So my dad told me, we mentioned called yesterday. The degree of ionization, cellular binding, and the duration of action. So the, the longer that the drug will stay in your body, the longer it will have its action. Then the expected therapeutic effects and then, of course, the toxic effects. Factors relating to the body, we have vascular, uh, vascularity. So this uh, will tell us how uh, with regards to the blood flow, uh, flow to that organ. So I think I have mentioned it um, yesterday. So, between your bone and your brain, mas darla mo iton blood uh, supply to your brain. So, mas darla the tendency or into your liver, mas darla ang, ang tendency for the drug to go to these vital organs. Transport me mechanisms. So, kung haain dito ang receptors, so of course, any, mas madali mag-enter uh, mag at drug. The presence of blood uh, bar uh, barriers, yeah. just like your, ano, the blood-brain bar uh, barrier. So placental barriers, this is especially true for pregnant women. So you should be careful in giving the drug that is teratogenic. I mean, it goes to the baby, so it will compromise it on growth. Then the plasma binding proteins. So the, when the drug is tightly bound to the plasma protein, so much lesser niya bioavailability. Then the ratio between the free and the bound forms of the drug, I just would like to emphasize it again that it is the free drug that is biologically when I say biologically active, it is the part of the drug or the form of the drug that is responsible for the expected therapeutic effects. Then the presence of drug interactions, this is very important, especially if the, if the patient is taking more than one drug, the possibility of drug-drug interactions. Like for example, you have a diabetic patient, and this patient is TB patient also. So um, you should be you should choose what to give to your patient in order to control the di the diabetes of the patient. At the same time, the medication that you give, that you give to your patient to control the sugar will not compromise the TB management of the patient. That's uh, drug interactions. Then, of course, this is states. What, for example, you have a diabetic patient, already a renal patient. There's already a uh, compromise in the renal function of the patient. And you are giving a drug that 
uh, is eliminated through the kidney. So, makokompromise ni hapon niya. Then, the presence of drug reservoir and then, of course, uh, volume of distribution. So, those are the factors related to the body that has an influence in the distribution of drugs in our body. Okay? So, what are the determinants of drug distribution? So, I keep on flashing this slide. So, membrane. One determinant is membrane permeability. So, it is easy for the drug to enter into the to the cell, so mas distributed itong itong ano itong drug. So like for example, kung lipid soluble niya, anatong by layer membrane is also lipid nature. So there would be easy access of this drug to enter into that cell. Okay, so this is just an example how how a lipophilic drug interacts in the cell. So, and ano, another concept that is related to pharmacokinetics is the effective drug concentration. So, what is effective drug concentration? This is the concentration of the drug at the receptor uh, site. The concentration of the drug at the receptor site. So, uh, this simply means Bisan ano nga road ginhatag an ano an an drug to the patient. An importante we are giving the patient a dose that is effective enough for whatever in purpose it imo gin ano nga maririch imo. Like for example, kung gusto nimo magtambal itong pasyente nga giniinobo dapat ang ginahatag nga ko ang natambal in a way nga maabot na to hai mo lang fish uh, tissue itong patient na sufficient enough to control the symptoms of the patient. Okay? So how will you do this? Kay ang impapabuhat man o an kuan man kung, uh, you can determine the drug concentration that is effective at the receptor side. Paano man niyo mag-measure ito niya? Kung ato itong receptor side talaga. So, ano pinaka-convenient way to measure this effective drug concentration is to do blood measurement. Blood measurement. Why? Because it is easy. There is easy access to measure the amount of drug that is uh, contained in the receptor. Kaya ano, of course, there is an assumption here that when you measure the drug concentration, it is already at its steady state, meaning at the state of equilibrium. There, ikay, yan na pala, nagpatumart ang pasyente, After 15 minutes, my blood blood extraction kana dere, huh? So you will give, you will wait at at some time that there is equalization or the the dose is already in equilibrium. Kaya para maaram ka, ang nakatunghan tissue na particular part of your body, inin same ito niya concentration ha blood. Did you get it? Okay, dali dali on na to ni. So amon niya. So if you have that ano to in concept, so we have the volume, the V that is given to the patient, the dose, the dose that is given to the patient, and the concentration they measured. Uh, concentration in the blood. So again, when you do this equation, there is an assumption that the drug is evenly distributed in your body. Pero actually, there is a permanent. 
Okay, so from that equation, you can derive now the so-called volume of distribution. This simply means the amount of drug in the body over that the measured plasma concentration. The measured plasma concentration. E di ba ano, magkukuha ka man yung dugo para to measure the effective drug concentration. Okay. However, this is subject to kuan in in uh, bagan ano, there is a factor that will that will affect the the distribution of the uh, uh, volume of the drug because um, one factor that will affect here is the protein binding or uh, protein binding so the extent of the drug protein binding in the plasma or tissue affects the volume of distribution Drugs that are highly bound to plasma proteins have low fraction of free drug. Diba? Ayaw ni ito kang alimte. The one that is biologically active form of the drug is the free drug. drug. Okay? It's the free drug. So, the problem now, uh, you will now have a problem if there is increased binding of the drug to the plasma proteins. So, gurugutila ang imo mamemeasure kay puro man na po. Ano doon si Ringbal, ang mga taga-toan, Eastern Samar, damo ang mga kup-kup didahan, ano, ang protein. Okay? Sik-sik. Hindi, nasak-sak, dere, nakapiyot, di ba yan? Nakapiyot. Nag-init. Okay, so another problem that will affect your volume of distribution is uh, with regards to protein binding is damo naman itong ano, mabindi that imo protein, plasma protein, so less of the drug will diffuse freely into the cell and ano, it is less distributed to tissues. Okay, adaman na hiyan na kub-kub. Itong plasma proteins. Okay? So, how will you appreciate here the effect of protein uh, binding uh, as an, an effect from hidden vo uh, volume of distribution? Here, concentrate on this uh, illustration. This, this pink one is your in vascular compartment, meaning the blood vessel. Yeah. So, we have the this one is the plasma proteins. Ini nga A, amon hiya iton, drug. Okay. So, ano na itatabo? This, this first ano, scenario is less of the drug that combines to the, that combines to the, to the, protein. So, kung guti ay lang ni eh, ang drug na combine ha plasma protein, more of the drug will enter the compartment. Kaka G. So, when you compute for the volume of distribution, like for example, if we give theoretical value na naghatag kita hin 20 ka drugs, molecules of drugs, 18 ang sumulod na compartment. Kaya wari man yun na dede. So, duha la ang nabilin. So, if you're going to compute for the volume of distribution, we have 20 na ginhatag. Tapos, 2 la ang na-measure na la dede. So, what is the volume of distribution? We have 10. So, uh, among the 20 nga ginhatag na uh, ginhatag nga dose sa uh, patient, doha lang nabilin, tapos 18 ang sumunod. Okay? Get si Tondida? We'll now go to the next scenario. Here, in this scenario, we have a drug who favors 
to combine with the plasma protein na kub kub gudiya ito ang plasma protein so ano ito mahita tabo kaya na kub kub man hiya gutila ang nakasudod ha compartment ito ang body so kung 20 ang imo ginhatag ha ha patient andi so utso nag kub kub good bal dida ino kub good So ano na itabo? Duhala an lumusot. Di ba? Duhala lumusot. So ano man, when you compute for the volume of distribution, you have 20 ang ginhata na patient and then pag gukuan nimo han han pag determine mo han effective concentration, this also pa nabilin. So, please take note. Nag nag differ ang iya volume of distribution you have 1.1 so here plasma proteins nag combine ang mga drugs what's the difference between scenario number out letter C here diri ra na kup kup dito ton plasma proteins and ira receptors are al available intracellularly inside the cell. So, kung amit na tatabo, less lang ang imo makukuan, mabibilin, kay puro man nila, di rin man nila associated to the plasma protein. So, kung mainti ang imo or damo ron ka nala, kung damo man ang imo kuan, na hataga pa pasyente, like 200, tapos duhala na bilin, tapos ma-expect ka kung ta na damo gihapon ang makakasulod. Pero ang problema, ang ira receptors are available inside the cell. So dito hira, nag-cup-cup, nag-sup-sup, dede, sulod. So, anong may tabo? When you measure for the blood uh, concentration na decrease na gihapon. So like, for example, the volume of distribution is 200 and in binhatag, tapos duhala din na mesyo mo, ay naman ang iba. So may angkay na gub-gub na nandungan intracellular na receptor. And you have something like this, na volume of distribution. Did you understand? Did you appreciate the role of plasma protein binding of the drug. Oo na lang ka mo kay mag-quickness na kita. Okay? So, what are the implications of having this volume of distribution values? Drugs that distribute extensively have relatively large volume of distribution values. So, a very high VD may indicate high lipophysicity or many receptors for the drug. So, kung high animo volume of distribution, it's either in what I problem at iya pag diffuse kay lipid niya or there are available receptors for the drug inside the cell. So, we have also a very high VD may indicate considerable sequestration now the drug in the organ, concerned organ. Or a very high value may indicate extensive binding to tissue sites. If the VD is high, most of the drugs in the extra plasmic space is not available to the excretory organ. So, may tendency, ma-retain here ang hapo and can i-affin tinakad ang mga tissues. So, di rin mo ma-excrete. So, a very low VD may indicate extensive plasma protein binding. Ang mga doon kaninan ang scenario A. Okay? Another concept with regards to pharmacokinetics, harani na kita, don't worry, in elimination. So, the most important parameter with regards to elimination is drug clearance. So, it is defined as the volume of plasma Cleared of drug per unit time. So, ang volume and plasma na cleared from the drug 
at certain point in time. Okay, that's drug clearance. So if you're going to look for the formula of clearance, this refers to the rate of elimination of the drug over, again, plasma drug concentration. So here we have the clearance that is liters per hour. It is given. And then the plasma drug concentration in milligrams per DL, this is also determined known. So if you know the clearance of the drug and the concentration that is given to the patient, then you can compute for the elimination rate. Okay? So, I have discussed this already yesterday. This one. And drug elimination. And, and zero order elimination and first order elimination. Uh, first order elimination the ano the higher is the concentration of the drug the faster oh, is the the uh, elimination of the drug so kun hataas ang iya concentration mas faster ang iya elimination whereas in zero order elimination in regardless of the concentration of the drug constant iton iya elimination did you get the difference a first order order elimination, the higher is the concentration, plasma concentration of the drug, the greater is the extraction or elimination. Whereas in zero order elimination, regardless of the ano, concentration of the drug, the same la iton iya elimination rate. Okay? So... Clearance depends on the drug and the condition of the organs elimination in the patient. This is very important. Like, for example, I am dealing here with a diabetic patient who having already nephropathy. May dananiya CRF, secondary to diabetic, diabetic kidney disease. So, and may tatabo. And the, the drug that I am giving to the patient is Eliminated primarily through the kidneys. So, ano may tatabo? May problema na niya kidneys. Tapos, ano akong ginahatan na tambal? Naagi pa ang kidney. So, ano may tatabo? Clearance. There is the possibility that the patient will retain the drugs. Diba? Kay disease naman iya ko an. It iya organ. Okay? So, clearance of the particular drug by the individual is equivalent to the extraction capability of that organ for that drug times the rate of delivery of the drug to the organ. So, we have this equation, extraction times the delivery. Pero primarily, it clearance is dependent on blood flow. Blood flow to the, to the organ. Amulay ito. Inalat niyo pag... Okay, another concept that is very important in, in ano, pharmacokinetics is half-life. Half-life. So this is the time required to divide the plasma concentration by 2 after reaching the pseudo-equilibrium distribution. Please take note that this is not the time necessary for the amount of the administered drug in the body to fall by one half. Naintindihan niyo yun, hinihiya? Half-life? It is the time required, required, the time required to divide the plasma concentration by two, not the amount administered for the drug to fall to the half of the concentration. Please take note of the difference be between these two. Uh, we In half-life, we are talking here of the time required na magin half it iya concentration. Okay. So half-life is equal to we have the noton, we have the this constant point 69.3 times the volume of distribution 
over that of clearance. Okay. So, there are some factors that that affects or may have an influence in the half-life of the drug. So, it can be uh, affected by the person's weight. Diba? Kung matambok, yung pasyente, damot susuduy-suduy yan, di ba? Well, <laughs> Tapos gender, health of the patient, and many other factors. Like for example, an ano concern uh, organ like an diabetic nephropathy. There's already problem in the kidney, so it can also have an influence with regards to the half life. Okay. Next uh, concept related to pharmacokinetics is bioavailability of the drugs. So this simply means the fraction of drug administered reaching the systemic circulation. So the significance of this is the dosage of drugs with high hepatic extraction, especially if you give the drug to the patient through oral, or through oral road. That's just like this example. So we have the dosage form of the drug. So orally administered. So di na pala itong pag oral, ano, in, in paghatang ni mga pasyente, may na di the problem of disintegration. Pag kuwan pala, in, in hain maurupay, kung in, in liquid, in a formulation or tablet or capsule, so may na di the problema de disintegration. Tapos, imo isa swallow na ito na ha, GI tract. Anong problema luwat dito? An absorption. And then also, whether uh, there is a need to take the drug with an empty stomach or full stomach. So, that's another factor affecting the bioavailability of the drug. And then, the drug will be now be absorbed into your blood. And then, maagi pa nga doon imo liver then magkakamayada na uh, first pass effect. So, pag sulod na nga doon blood up, uh, in the cert, uh, systemic circulation, ato ka na magtuan. Whether the drug is in, in ano, uh, in the drug uh, is associated with uh, plasma proteins or they exist as a free drug. Ano na akong sering? It's the free drug that is biologically active. So, okay. So, during distribution, so the, the drug may be uh, not, uh, concentrated in tissues and fluids, compromising now the distribution again. And then the drug uh, that is also uh, that exert now its uh, uh, expected action and then the para pharmacological effect. Okay? So, what are the uh, no, factors that have an influence in the bioavailability of the drug? So, you can have problems in absorption, the influence of first pass metabolism, and the so called tissue sequestration meaning the drug is the drug is uh, concentrated in a particular tissue next concept is extraction ratio the extraction ratio can be defined as the proportion of the drug removed during the passage through that uh, that organ so this is especially true. Like, for example, if you are dealing here with a drug that goes to your liver. So, during kung pala, pag hindi pala itong drug na to, liver, may dan na ako anak dito. Dili lang ay ito mga politiko, ito may ada, 10%. So, pati gihap itong atay, na 10% gihap ito nira. Up to that time, kapag gato na dito, unexpected uh, site of action of that drug, Walay na, walay na, walay ka uman ang buwan. Ang ano doon, insufficient na ang dose. Okay? 
So extraction uh, ratio, it's the function of the drug removed from the perfusion blood during its passage through an organ. It is a measure of the elimination of the drug by that organ. So especially, uh, this is specially used in the liver. So we have the so-called liver extraction ratio. So the liver extraction ratio provides the direct measurement of drug removal from the liver after oral administration of the drug. Okay, so we have something like this. So high hepatic extraction ratio because of the secondary to large first pass effect causing now uh, a decrease in the bioavailability of the drug. Okay. Next, dosage regimens. So this simply means the manner in which the drug is taken or given to the patient. This is a refers to the plan for drug administration over a period of time and with the purpose of achieving the therapeutic levels of the drug not to exceed to its toxic concentration. That's the significance of your dosage regimens. So again, the purpose of dosage regimen is to maintain the plasma concentration at a specified range over long periods uh, of treatment. So this uh, use, uh, this is used in maintenance doses. Okay. So what are the approaches of designing a dosage uh, dosage regimen? You can have the empirical dosage regimen. This is simply designed by uh, physicians based on empirical data. So based on the available data in, in research or personal experience by the physician and clinical observation. Hello? Okay man paghatag itong insulin. Hindi nga po an. Tapos based also in the observation. However, this is said to be not accurate. Another approach is individualization of dosage regimen. So this is said to be the most accurate approach and is based on the pharmacokinetics of the drug in the individual patient. This is, ano, is suitable for hospitalized patients. And then the, the third one is uh, dosage regimen on population averages. So there are two models of this. We have the fixed and the adaptive. And fixed, of course, kung anong nakabutang nga guidelines, ang ah, good la. And adaptive is kung anong liwat and may the influence itong environment or the, the area of practice. Okay? So factors affecting the design of dosage regimen, the size of the drug dose, and the frequency of drug administration. So this is, like for example, kung nagdadali ka, nagdadali ka pag, ano, pag paghataghan ng dose ang patient, kay may danim ginahabol, na bahing ka matuan, maori, like for example, giving of antimicrobial agents, or giving of anticonvulsants and bang yung mauna pa ang seizure and patient than giving the, the, the drug. So those are some of the considerations. Okay, so talking about do, ano, uh, dosing, uh, dosage regimen, we have the so-called loading dose. This is achieved. Uh, there is uh, the purpose primarily of giving the loading dose is you want to achieve the plasma drug concentration rapidly. Ano ito? Lalayan niya. Ha? Lalayan? Sagad na pakiana. Na ano man? Ipakiana. Ah, nagawad yung pakiana. Kaya na sumag tulad. Uy, nalilin niya sa grup. Uy, ano na? Nagarag nun na kami. Uy, bal, sa huwag niya di na, nagtatagay na dati mga classmate. Ang madalok. Sige na, iupod kita. Itira pagtagay. 
Lagi dipenuhin. Hmm. Story ya. Oke. Okay. Pada ayun aku para kita makan please. Oke. So, the loading dose is given for the purpose of loading the needed call volume the distribution for the truck. Actually, loading dose. Nakakausala, ha? Okay, so no dito, maintenance dose. Okay? This is how you do your loading dose. So, loading dose is equal to the volume of distribution times the target plasma concentration over that of the bioavailability of the drug. So, my the example. Okay. The next is maintenance dose. This refers to the maintenance rate of the drug administered equal to the rate of elimination at steady state. So, this is defined as the amount of drug required to keep a desired mean steady state concentration in the tissues. So, again, Nakakausala ka hatag in loading dose tapos the rest na and maintenance dose. So, diri ani mauuna ang maintenance and loading. Right? This for the purpose of loading your patient na para ma rapid and delivery and tapal. Okay? You have something like this to compute. So, dosing rate, you need clearance times the desired plasma concentration over that of bioavailability. You have something like this. So please take note, para pariho lagi po ni Tiyahin, loading dose but included na and dosing interval. Dosing interval and maintenance. So the same lang niya formula but you should mil uh, multiply, uh, multiply it by how many times you give the drug. Okay? So, additional guide to dosing, it is important to maintain a concentration above the minimum therapeutic level at all times. How can you achieve this? Through giving a larger dose at longer intervals or smaller doses at more frequent intervals. So it's either damo temiyatag at longer intervals or smaller doses at more frequent uh, intervals. If the difference between the toxic and therapeutic concentration is small, so what is the best way to do? You give smaller with more frequent doses. Para dirika ano uh, Ma umabot na to tong lethal matters. Okay? So this is how you adjust. Adjust uh, Adjustment of dosage when elimination is altered by the disease. This is special too, like for example, in the managing diabetic patients. So you need to correct. By ano, adjusting the dose, considering the creatinine clearance. And how do you compute for your creatinine clearance? You have something like this. Pero yan na, available naman nit yan at mga kuan. Uh, the cell phone na la. So, mas la, malaksi na la. Kami nga ni, we use the uh, GFR for the computation or for my patients. Okay? Huh? Tapos na. Yeah, hey, I still have five minutes before. Do you have any questions? Makakag-exam na kita. Nasa nang hikinit, okay lang po. Waray, kung problem. Do you have any questions? Do you have a question, Doc? Uh, yes. Uh, regarding elimination po. Yes. Um, I'm just confused with the first Are order. Are you confused? Uh, yeah, the first order. Ano, 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 first ano. order and zero order kinetics? Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Yung, In first order. Oh, sige. Yung exactly. zero order kinetics, di ba, Doc? Constant yung rate ng elimination. It, it ano? Yung zero. zero. Oh, yung zero. It's zero 
uh, order of elimination, irregardless of the dose of the drug, constant it the uh, rate of elimination. In in first order uh, kinetics or first order uh, elimination, it is dependent on half life. So the higher the higher is the dose of the drug, the greater it the uh, elimination half life. Tapos kung nagtitigal guti na niya ania concentration, nagtitika decrease luat an iya elimination half life. Okay, doc. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Questions? Bay na maturo na. Misa, Benedict, Paolo. Sir, mata pa, sir. Oh, sige. Wow, may da guard da pa niya. May da pa niya mga guards. Halikod. Sige na, you ask questions. May para mag-feedback. Luwat ako ka ni Mama. Para ipapakayan na doon. Wow! So, ano man yun yun? Diretso ko na na yata ka ni Mama. Timo, kuan score Monday. Ayaw ka, Dok. Kay? Pidaan mo naman iyo kwarta. Other, ano? You ask questions. Na? O, kuan? Ray, Angelo, Hidalgo. Stop. Question. Ano? May da ka? Kuan pagpaswap? You ask question. Ha? Waray. Langan. Nalate na lang pagkaon kay ano? Where's ano? Waray questions? Hinot ko ang ba? Doktora Chua. Doktora Chua. Ano? Okay la, nakaintindi ka mo? Bisan la buti ay? Dok, ako may dago question. Who is this? It's me. Timbal, dok. Timbal. Sige. Ano man? Actually, dok, yun nga question. Maiha ko na yun nga. Yung papagyan na bisan na natrabaho pa. Kaya ano usually itong mga take home? Kaya ano what is will do? Kaya nung yung tanggalan ko yung health. Ano? Ano nung question? Kaya ano yung sulit mga take-home nads, PO? Gin-pro-promote talaga nga PO. Kaya kung PO kasi, di ba, magkakadahin first pass effect. So, mas matay siguro kung 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 naibig. Kaya para diretso systemic circulation, di ba? It imula. Makaupod ka't pasyente nga imokras. Di rin daw kay... Actually, there is such thing as step down drug. Like for example, we are dealing here with antimicrobial agents, di ba? Antibi, ah, pinaka common is kwaan na antibiotics, di ba? So, ah, first, of course, we are dealing here with an admit, ah, admitted na patient, and there is ano access for someone to care, to take care with the patient. Of course, the nurses. So, if you continue la himpuro kuan, himpuro IV in injections of the antibiotic for the patient, yun what would ma-follow up dito kuan, ha-ira. Another kuan, di ba? May daman ito gihapon, there are indications when to, when to, ano to, uh, discharge the patient. If there is already improvement in terms of vital signs, hindi rin na 
ano, a febrile na itong emo patient. So that means the patient is responding now to your present management na pwede na i-continue na la itong i-continue na la itong management at home and we have the so-called step down drug from an IV we give something na oral na compare itong comparable itong iya efficacy and safety with the IV antibiotics. Like, for example, I, I will give a specific example. In terms of profile of amphicillin, amphicillin, amphicillin has good bioavailability when it is given through IV and decreased bioavailability when it is given orally. So, what we usually do is we start the patient with ampicillin and then as a step-down drug, we give amoxicillin. Why amoxicillin? Why amoxicillin? Okay, amoxicillin has, ano, with regards to the profile of amoxicillin, in terms of bioavailability, Amoxicillin has good oral bioavailability compared to when the amoxicillin is given through IV. Nakuha at do lane. So diri la ito pataka ni Oh, I don't know diri kay pagkuan nito iba. There are some doctors na uh, May dagas ako ng experience nga yung pakunting nyo lang ang drug pero shift to oral pero same medication lang yapon. So nag-wonder lang ito kay... Nag-wonder ka. Don't worry, Dane. Kay, diri pa pa yung natanan. It profile itong itong buwan. It profile itong itong medications. Kay, if you really check for the in profile itong uh it on specific na drug pwede tiya may that there are there are some drugs that both the oral and the IV preparations they don't differ in terms of bioavailability amo okay, nga da, damo damo amo nga ni nga damo iton iton okay, ano tong kuan nakaka-notice ka mo nga there in in a certain uh, particular na drug, there are many preparations. May the injectable, may the uh, antibiotic, may the bihapon oral. Okay? During kuan studies, in, in uh, maybe, wari nira significant difference in terms of bioavailability. Okay. Hindi naman ito always gihapon, makakasering ka, just because it is given orally, nga it always uh, affected significantly by the first pass effect. E pwede man natin yan, umagila dito, ha, liver, tapos masaring na, hi, dain, tapos dawas. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Noted na answer na, Doc. O, so, mabalik ka na ka, nurse. Ano na lang pag-doctor? Oh, do you do? Hindi. Hindi na. Hindi na nakabalik dito nga kung makapoy na. <laughs> wow. Gusto na nimo mo ikaw, na ikaw na nasugot nurse. Oh, di rin do. Di rin. Batasan ko ito nga ako't mag-iis talaga. Wow. Asa ah, daw ka na daw. Natambok ka. Awa rin naman trabaho. <laughs> oh, so that means di rin ka na daw. Oh, chismis na ini. Di rin ka na nag-iis na. Other questions? Doc? May yeah. daw po nagpapa-ask. Okay. Oh. Pero secret na daw po po ni Nohia. Ay, ano? Hindi rin ni Yuko. Bang, hindi rin ni... Last week po, Doc. Itong napuan. Napakiana. Hindi oh, rin po, Doc. Ano niya po pakiana? Usually ano, daw po. Oo, oh, an, sige. Ano niya po na batian? Pag-ask niya, ay ba na? Usually daw po, gina-announce po ni Yons for San Quizes. Pwede po <laughs> daw po no i-PM na la. <laughs> PM? Gusto ko nga niya kung ano, bumbo radyo. 
ってるの。パラコアン、えっと、トランスパレンシー。サニティトン、イトンフィリピナスディリナコアン。イトンフィリピナスディリナアセンソーカイ、コロティナゴ。ティバー。ペノマガノ。えー、amol na itong kaya. De, amol. Am, number one gun niya ko an is accept. Amol naging nga ni na na eskwela ka mo kay gusto niyo makabaro. Dere kay ko an ma-expect ka mo nga ano to no? mag-aramda yung ka mo. So, it's by merely accepting your limitations na makakabaro ka. Eh, kwari daw ko niya si Sekretohon. Mas nalugod kita ni Pangdudahan na ay baka hidain sangkay ni Dr. Skibel ni Sekreto la. Aw, ay magsangkay kami. Kuanta na lang, iposta na lang Facebook. Ano? Hino atong ay mong sangkay, Doktora Chua? Secret na daw po. Kaya kung ano, kung wala'y sekreto, ano, kaya ano na, awod mang kamoy, ito yung scores. Kaya, siyempre, like for example, first quiz, first quiz pa na, so, as in, in in koan, With humble heart, you accept na amul ang anam imo kaya, and then promise to yourself na next time I will do better na. E maaram na ko the style ni Doctor Skibel. Koan nakadjust ka na. Pero kung mahuman na lat si Mister, pero minsala nagadjust na. Apay da paman sunod nga tuig. Yan ang tuig nagadjust ka. Okay? Sige. Ano na? Waray na questions? Hello? Hinot mga taga UP din ni? Waray. Hello?